To draw the Lewis structure for SeO3-, the first thing we need to do is count up the valence electrons. Se is in group 16, sometimes called 6A. It'll have six valence electrons. Oxygen, same group, six valence electrons. We have three oxygen atoms. And then this two minus up here, that means we have two additional electrons. So we'll just add two for a total of 26 valence electrons for SeO3-. minus. So Se is the least electronegative element. We're going to put that in the center of our Lewis structure. Then we'll put the three oxygens around it. Next, we'll put electrons between the atoms. This will form the chemical bonds. Then we complete the octets on the outer atoms. So now we've used 24 valence electrons, but we have 26. So let's just put our last two right here on the central atom, complete the octet. And this looks like a pretty good Lewis structure. The one problem we have, though, is our formal charges, they aren't quite what we'd like to be. They look like this. Let's move this down some. So what we'd like is to have our formal charges add up to this 2 minus here, but to be as close to 0 as possible. So what we can do, we could move this pair of electrons here between the selenium and the oxygen. And now we'd have a 0 formal charge for this oxygen and for that central Se there. These are still both negative 1, but we need to have them as negative 1, so that adds up to this charge on the ion. So this is the most favorable Lewis structure, or the best Lewis structure, for SeO3-2-. We should put brackets around it to show that it's an ion. And then we could write 2- out here. You'll note that there are resonance structures for this, this compound here. This double bond could be here. We could have put it here or here. In reality, what we end up with is an average of those three resonance structures. So you could draw it like this here to show that there's the average there. This is our lone pair here and then up here. This is Dr. B with the Lewis structure for SeO3-2-. Thanks for watching.